In section 4 of this chapter 1, we will discuss approximating the solutions. And we shall start with the Euler method, which will be a good way to introduce these numerical methods. So let us start with a simple ODE with this even in R, R1, I mean R, I mean uh, very, very simple, Y takes its values in R. So it's Y prime of T equals F of T, Y of T, that's the ODE, and we have the initial condition Y of T naught equals Y naught, so that's an initial value problem that I would like to, uh, I would like to approximate the solution to this IVP. Now, if H is positive, and provided that uh, Y has the right regularity, which hopefully it does since we are differentiating it, then uh, Y of T naught plus H will be Y of T naught plus Y prime of T naught time H uh, plus a capital O of H square. And again, if you are not uh, familiar with the Lando notation, then I suggest you make yourself familiar with these Lando notations because they're obviously very useful. Now, since y prime of t naught is f of t naught y t y of t naught, then what we can do is replace that second term to the right hand side of the equation y prime t naught h by h f t naught y t y of t naught. Okay, so what we're saying is that since O of H square can be made smaller than any chosen epsilon, provided of course that H is small enough, then we can approximate Y of T naught plus H by Y of T naught plus H times F of T naught uh, Y of T naught. Okay? With, again, an error that will be smaller than any epsilon that I gave earlier, right? Provided again that my h is small enough. So uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I can approximate y of t naught plus h because I can compute a y of t naught that, that is actually uh, given. That's why not, and I can uh, compute f of t naught y of t naught. So really everything is known. Therefore, I can compute y of t naught plus h. And of course, once I have computed y of t naught plus h, now I know y of t naught plus h, I can iterate this process and I can compute y of t naught plus h plus h, so plus 2h, and then y of t naught plus 3h, etc. So, so I can really push forward my knowledge of y uh, based on this uh, way to compute the values of y. Now this is called the Euler forward method, or simply the Euler method. Now I would like to uh, show you what it means graphically. What it means graphically is that you start with y of t naught equals y naught. So, so you know that point, you know the value of y at t naught. That's your initial condition. So of course you know the value. But you also know uh, the slope of the tangent right? At that point. And the reason why you know the slope of the tangent is because you have an ODE. So you know that y prime is f of t y of t. Therefore, uh, y prime at t naught is f of t naught y of t naught, which is basically y naught. So you can compute the slope of your tangent at t naught. So again, what do you know at t naught? You know two things. You know y of t naught, that's y naught, but you also know the slope at that point. So you know how you start. Well, guess what? Since you know how to start, you're going to just go in that direction for a little bit, and then you're going to say, okay, uh, I just found my new point here. That's going to be y naught plus a small h. Y naught. I mean, t naught plus a small h. That's t naught plus h. Okay? Uh, and that's exactly what you do here. Okay, you basically do a delta t or h if you prefer, and then you go forward in the direction of that, of that tangent, and then you reach another point, and that's the point t naught plus h. And then you keep doing that, you do t, you, you basically at that point, again, now you, you have an approximation of your, of your function, then you're going to say, okay, I know the point, I know the slope, 
uh, and then I'm going to go another a step forward to compute the next value. That is the Euler method. So let's actually give uh, this Euler method uh, some, some, formal, uh, some, some formal definition here. So we will call the Euler forward method uh, that sequence. So we start with Z naught equals Y naught. And then what we will do is Zn plus 1 is Zn plus H f of Tn Zn. And Tn plus 1 is simply Tn plus H. So H is a step. I'm basically moving forward, moving to the right uh, a, a little bit. And basically the question is what will be the approximation of my, my value of my, of my function uh, y uh, when I do this. So that is the Euler forward method. Now, what it means when you're basically doing the computations on your uh, ODE is that you substitute y prime of tn by zn plus 1 minus zn over h in the initial value problem, okay? By the way, you've noticed, and since the very beginning of this chapter, all of the indices are actually used, actually written as superscripts, right? These are not powers, not z raised to power n. It is an index. And instead of putting it uh, down below as a subscript, we're putting it as a superscript. There is a reason for this. It's because later on, when we will be doing elliptic PDEs, we will use the subscripts for space variables. And when we will actually do parabolic uh, ODEs, then we will use the superscripts for the time variable. So in order to be consistent in between chapter 7 and chapter 8, then we're using the superscripts here just uh, to simplify later on uh, the inclusion to the parabolic uh, ODEs. So that is the reason why we're using superscripts rather than subscripts. So don't get confused, it's just the same thing, just a notation, uh, we just prefer to do it this way. Let me give you an example immediately and you will understand this Euler forward method. Uh, y prime of t equals exponential minus y of t plus t will be our ODE. And the initial condition will be y of 0 equals 0. So t naught equals 0 and y naught is equal to 0. Of course, the function f is going to be f of tx equals exponential minus x plus t. And what we're going to do is consider a mesh of the interval 0, 2 with steps h or delta t, if you prefer, or ht, that will be 0 0.5. So we're going to subdivide our interval 0, 2 as we're going to look at what's happening in 0, in 0 0.5, in 1, in 1.5, and in 2. So hopefully we can compute y, an approximation of y, on this interval with this Euler 4 method and that h. Let's start with z0, z0. So z0 is going to be, well, y0, so that is uh, 0. So z0 is equal to 0. Now let's compute zn plus 1, where with n equals 0. So that will be, uh, well, zn plus hf of tn zn, again, n equals 0. So that means z1 is equal to z0 plus hf of t0 z0. Well, let me actually compute this. z0 is 0, uh, h is 0 0.5, f of t naught uh, z naught, so, so t, t zero again is zero, and uh, when we have uh, z zero equals zero, it means we basically plug in t equals zero and x equals zero in f t x, and that will give us one. So what I end up with is 0 0.5. So z one is 0 0.5. Let me now compute z2. So I will say it's z1 plus h time f of t1 z1. So I plug everything in and I obtain 1.053. Uh, That's an approximation of my z2, but I'm doing a numerical approximation. So it's, it's, it makes sense to approximate. And then I keep going with z3. Uh, z3 will be 1.728, it's an approximation again. And z4 will be approximate, approximately 2.567. Uh, now, 
what you have is that Z0 is an approximation of Y0, Z1 is an approximation of, zero, of Y of 0 plus H, so that's, that, that's Y of 0 0.5, Z2 is an approximation of Y1, and then so we, we, we keep going until Z4, which is an approximation of Y2. Okay? Now, what I would like to show you is uh, the difference between the numerical approximation and the actual solution to the ODE. Well, it just turns out that we can actually uh, find a closed form for that particular ODE. Okay, as I said earlier, it's not the case for all of the ODEs, and that's why we are interested in finding the numerical approximations of the solution. In this particular case, we can find the closed form, the analytic solution. So uh, that, that's why I actually chose this ODE. Uh, some people could say, well, it makes no sense to choose this ODE since uh, there is no point in, num in doing numerical, uh, you know, I mean, computations and approximation if we can find the closed form. Of course, the reason why I chose this is so we can compare the exact solution with what we just did in terms of approximation. So again, we have an exact closed form for the solution to the ODE and here on the on the table which is here i put t what we find with the euler method and what we find what, what is the exact solution in other words i plug in t in the exact solution to the od and to the, on the graph i basically uh plotted the the the, the basically both uh the the euler uh, method and the exact solution so what do we have so again here in the first column i have tn in the second column, I have Zn, Euler method, and in the third column, I have Y of Tn. Is it uh, acceptable? Is this gonna, does it look like a good approximation? Well, let's actually compute the error. The error is, well, of course, when you start at zero, and then it actually, well, it increases, uh, but here is the error we have. Okay. Now, there is a question, obviously, that everybody is, uh, is, is waiting for the answer to this question, which is, can we actually make the, approximation, the, the approximate solution Zn as close as we want to the real solution? Okay, I mean, we see that the, the, the error increased in the previous example, but we had a pretty large h. I mean, h was 0 0.5. What would happen if instead of choosing 0 0.5, where to choose, say, 0 0.25 or 0 0.1 or even 0 0.01, would that actually improve things? Well, that is a very natural question. And an even better question is, if uh, I need uh, a, 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 certain, um, uh, uh, a certain reliability of my, on my solution, if I need to know that my solution will be, say, for instance, no uh, further away than 10 raised to negative 16, can I, can I achieve that by choosing a step ht small enough? Well, this question uh, will, be, will be answered in this, uh, in this class, in this very first chapter. And to do this, we will introduce a few notations. First, we'll call en, small e, uh, the difference between y of tn and zn. So that was the, 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 third, the last column, the fourth column in uh, the previous slide. And capital E, capital N, will be the maximum error I can have on the N plus 1 first terms of my approximation. So uh, E0, obviously, will be, normally it will be 0. And then as we go, uh, well, obviously the error was increasing, but maybe it would be decreasing at some point. We don't know. What I'm saying is capital E, N, is the maximum error I can get on my n plus one first uh, steps or n step after the, initial, the initialization. And obviously, the question that I would that we that we would like to address is: Do we have that error capital E n go to zero when the step H t goes to zero? Okay, uh, and. If that is the case, then we will say the numerical method 
is convergent. And indeed, if I want an error which is bounded by epsilon, say for instance 10 raised to the power of negative 16, then I will be able to find a HT that will be maybe very small. I don't you know, I mean, but, but at some point there will be an HT for which that can be achieved. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, the Euler method is convergent, provided that F is Lipschitz continuous.